Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Big County Birdwatch 2023 here in Essex. Hello, guys. How are we doing? Evening. 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 Hello. Good evening. Well, thanks, Matt. That was, that was a very sedate intro. I thought normally I'd kind of shout and go, hello. I thought, well, just be calm. Calm. That's, un- it might that's unlike you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, the last half hour has been kind of rush, 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 and the last 10 seconds have just been like, calm. Oh. So let's start calm. <laughs> I think after the day's weather that we've had, um, we probably need a bit of calmness, don't we? It's been a bit interesting today, hasn't it? Oh, it's been a great day. It really has. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Least, I'm looking out the window now, still peeing down of rain. <laughs> you can't say that. It's before nine o'clock. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> precipitation. <laughs> that's what the P bit, precipitation. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's fine. You were abbreviating. That's okay. That's yeah. absolutely fine. <laughs> Isn't that what it means? I'm still not even dry out, to be honest with you. All my stuff is in the other room, just laid out all over the floor and just trying to dry out in time for a stupid year. Surprising how wet we got on that last half hour or so, isn't it? Mm, Very wet. I thought the best bit was because I was holding my scope, I've got a little gap in the cuff of my waterproof jacket. And Steve, you were watching, weren't you? When I put my scope down, a load of water just poured out of my jacket. (laughs) Yeah. Like a waterfall. Uh. (laughs) Um, but yes, so uh, we've got early starts in the morning, haven't we, Steve? We have. Mm. Early, to bed, early to bed tonight. Yes, and someone had an early start today, didn't they, other Steve? So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, sorry, Steve, because everyone's seen Jerry before, the society chair. And we have another guest this evening, Steve Hallam. Um, so do you want to introduce yourself, Steve? Sorry. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, uh, Steve Hallam, I've been in the society for a few years now, um, albeit I'm only just getting around to coming on a few uh, on a few events. But for quite a few years uh, up here in West Burgold, just north of Colchester, I've been uh, involved with a wood support group for Hill House Wood at West Burgold, which is owned by the Woodland Trust. It, it, it moved into Woodland Trust ownership in about 1990 and, and a kind of a support group grew out of the appeal to save it from going paintballing. Um, and um, we do sort of bits and bats of, of conservation work in the uh, in the wood. But, but right from the early days, uh, we were lucky that there was a very um, a, a great naturalist of renown um, called Joe Furman, who lived in uh, West Burgholt. And so he uh, 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 volunteered in, in early days to start leading guided walks, um, which was fine for a few years. But um, Joe got to the point in everybody's life where there is no more. Um, and one of the consequences of that was they needed somebody to fill in and... Um, um, uh, take over the walks and um, one of the downsides of um, having the gift of the gab is that you tend to get volunteered for things so um, even though um, um, thunderingly ill qualified I was sort of pr- promoted I was given the honour of taking over some of these um, these guided walks and um, uh, continue to do so today one of them was a dawn chorus walk and and the reason why we start at the insane hour of 3.45 is well what I tell people is to give us time to walk to the wood and sort of get set and explain to people how dawn courses work and this that and the other of course the real reason was basically infantile pride on my part whereby if 3.45 is good enough for Joe Furman I wasn't going to be a wuss and sort of put it back so I've kind of got <laughs> locked locked into 3.45 um, and so um, uh, we've been, so been doing this for several years but when uh, the society moved the um, the uh, Big County Bird Watch from autumn to spring. I norm- I normally run the hour walk um, the next weekend, but I had a word with Matt and said, "Look, would he be interested if I moved it forward a week and tied it in with the um, BCBW program?" Which is exactly what happened. Um, so that's the intro, I think, Matt. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned three forty-five starts. So, what time did you have to get out of bed this morning? To three fifteen. Three fifteen. Um, Ooh, that's this early. morning. Um, now, I don't know what that time of the day looks like, but you very kindly posted a picture, didn't you? Well, yes, you asked me to take a group photograph. Now, I have to say I'm not necessarily the world's most renowned f- photographer. So, I don't know, Matt, what went wrong. Maybe you can give me well, some tips. Well, um, let's shall we have a look. So there, there was a couple of pictures posted. The first one is obviously what what the world looks like for those that don't know at three forty five in the morning. 
Can we see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's dark. Well, there's a bit of light coming. There is. I was going to say up here, I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, but up here, there's a bit of blue sky. And we can count. Hang on a minute. I'm going to count the legs and divide by two. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there about a dozen people? Something there like was that? exactly there was exactly twelve people on it. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Excellent. And then um, I think a short while later. Hang on. Let me just move the screen around a bit. Hopefully, the next picture. We've got a a slightly brighter picture. Well, this was this was this was at the end. I've got no excuse because oh. I've woken up by then. Um, <laughs> but just kind of technology and I just don't get on. You know what? I think it's fine. I think it's it's a bit like one of those, you know, on Google Maps when you're driving around and you see people and they've kind of, you know, um, made them a little bit anonymous looking. I think that's absolutely fine. I think well, that actually, works. Matt, what, it, what it truly was was that there were a couple of people on the walk who weren't necessarily with their uh, c- correct, appropriate partners. So they asked me if I could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they asked me if I could doctor it. <laughs> you do realise they might be watching tonight. So you... <laughs> that's brilliant. OK. No, that's fine. So they, talk- they do now. <laughs> you know, well, I've heard some. I've heard some things about West Berg, oh, and obviously they're through. So, uh. <laughs> uh, well, twelve people on the walk. Um, so, how long? How long were you walking around for? Yeah, we well, we we set off bang on quarter to four, and and, and it's kind of c- quite bizarre that I never ever consciously plan the walk. We just wander around and almost let the birds sort of con- dictate the, the the pace of the walk. And yet year in, year out, I get back to the old church five minutes either side of six o'clock in the morning, which is exactly what we did again this morning. Um, yep. So, um, yeah, we sort of walk towards the wood. And as I say, it's about probably about half a mile to the wood along a, along a track. Um, and we normally hear the first bird um when we're part way down the track um and if we're lucky it's a nightingale wafting across the fields from the from the um ward which is lovely if we're unlucky it's a blasted cockerel that somebody sort of got a couple of years ago and rather spoils the whole sort of you know ambiance of yeah. the mystery of, of of the middle of the night um <laughs> but luckily this 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 year uh, fate was kind and the first bird we heard was a a nightingale in past years it has been a cuckoo it has been a skylark so it does vary um okay. and then we get to a particular point where we can just stop and and the ground all sort of falls away from where we where we're standing and kind of wait for things to happen mm. um and it was only really when i um, started doing this walk that i realized that actually we talk about the dawn chorus as if it's a thing but actually certainly the Hill House Wood Dawn Chorus is not one thing. It's about four four different things in sequence um, where you get odd random things just kind of tuning up before, you know, just clearing your throat kind of thing. Mm. Then you find that the, the first birds to sing are always the um, resident songsters, the, the blackbird, the wren, the robin, the song thrush. Um, and only when they've been going for a few minutes do the migrants nightingales apart sort yeah. of um come in and it's very noticeable and and then the other thing about the dawn chorus which which sort of makes me feel better about the start is that ours is basically finishes it finishes it, i would say the main wall of sound only goes on for about maybe 15 minutes maybe sometimes even less and okay. by um by the time we're halfway down the the, the particular path we go th- on down the wood which is probably quarter to five at the latest it's over mm. Mm. and okay. then you get then you get the um the non-songsters the you know the tits and the jackdaws and so on then they start piping up right. but um it's over very quickly well it's interesting okay i mean yeah certainly that time of the day i think we've, we've said before if, if anyone hasn't done one before um it's really worth getting along to to at least do one or just you know get up really early and go and stand in your garden if you've got a garden or in the nearest open space or woodland if you're near woodland because you don't have to go on a guided walk to enjoy bird song obviously um it helps if you're not sure what the songs are to hopefully find out what they are if you're on a guided walk that's the, that's the point of it and you can learn a bit but uh you can enjoy it every day at, at the you know crack of door yeah, you are really can't you and, and what also i find is 
weather permitting a really magical experience is um, without noticing it, because partly because you're in the wood, at some point the sun comes over the horizon. And then, of course, you get the, the sunbeams coming through the trees in the wood at, at a, you know, at a flat angle. And mm. um, it can be really, really lovely. And, and we're, we're not, like, well, not lucky. We, it's a bluebell wood as well. Now, the bluebells vary in their season they're late this year um but when you get the sun coming through the trees onto the bluebells that you then is when you really think do you know what it was actually worth getting up at such a daft hour absolutely absolutely and no one else is around it's really quiet you know there's no high calls going there's no traffic there's no dogs running around and so on not that those things are bad but it's just nice to have a bit of peace and yeah. quiet sometimes just you and nature i guess so yeah fantastic Oh, well done. Did, did you do a sort of a species count? I know that's not what Dawn Chorus is about, but any idea how well, many? Well, I, I, I normally don't, but I thought, I know I know what it's going to ask me. It was it was only about 20. It's not, it's it's not, you know, like Abbotton or whatever. You know, there's no. not that a variety of birds in there. It's really, and the walk has always been very much for local people who they're not birders. They're, it's probably the only time in the year they go they go bird watching. Funnily enough, they tend not to come back for a repeat. Um, but um, uh, yeah, no, it, it's for people who who just want to sort of go out and um, be told what sort of you know the common mm. birds are really. Yeah. Um, the one thing I would sort of comment though, actually, um, is that. Really, after I got back and started to think about it, I thought, you know, normally or archetypally, when everything kicks in, you get the kind of the wall of sound is such that it's virtually it's very difficult going and impossible to actually distinguish individual birds. So I was thinking this year we didn't get it. Um, and I was kind of thinking, what went wrong? What, what happened? And it dawned on me that the single thing this year that actually meant I felt that the 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 quality of the dawn courses was a bit disappointing is that there were not nearly as many black caps as they have been in previous years. Okay. Um, now the woods, unfortunately, uh, it's become very popular because it is a nice wood. Mm. And I suspect that the constant pedestrian and dog traffic has probably had some impact. That's just a mm. guess on my part, mm. but certainly um, this year, actually the, um, the, the, that, that, volume just didn't really hit the intensity that it has in the past okay well it'll be interesting to see what results um yourself steve and and me and mark and ours um have tomorrow morning mm. uh, so see how that compares um so yeah thank you steve that's brilliant thank you for that update and uh well done again and thanks for thanks for including your walk into the into the event um have we got any comments steve um we've got lots of good evenings from mo jackson neil sumner uh, Richard Chu, uh, Thomas Harris, Pete Dwyer, Paul Everett, David L. Smith, Ron Colson. Yeah, all say good evening. So good evening, everyone. Hello, a blanket. Hello to everyone. Yeah. Um, actually, you mentioned Mo. Sorry, I, I did promise last night we were going to open the show with Mo's video, which I have yeah. prepared, but I completely forgot to open the show with Mo's video. So um, let me see if I can work that out and then um, we'll hear about other things that have been happening today right hang on a minute in fact i'll tell you what jerry while i'm finding it because i can't remember where i put it uh i guess I can here we go da, 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 da. right Hopefully. Technology. can you see a, a screen with a a green picture and a herony thing in the middle yeah excellent right so just to remind everyone this is the night heron that was reported from abberton yesterday around about the middle of the day um found by glenn moore and mo jackson kindly sent in a video last night which when it came through it was kind of a bit sidewaysy so i've sorted it out and hopefully it's about 11 seconds so if i press play oh nice there you go nice so, yeah, night heron having a bit of a munch on something. Um, thanks very much for sending that in, though. And she also sent in a picture as well, which I will very, very quickly share, because obviously this is kind of yesterday's news, but I'll I'll share it again, because as I said, it didn't come through um, in time. So hold on. Let me open it. I should have, I should have had this prepared. Sorry, sorry, I was so busy listening to 
as Steve talked about his dawn walk this morning. That's I completely forgot. It's a good to... bird to see at this time of year in, in uh, Aberton, somewhere like that. And it's whether it was the same one that uh, was at Thorndon last week, we don't know. But uh, well, to see for the people that got there yesterday. That's the thing. We, we just don't know, do we? You know, um, right, hold on. I'm not sure what's going on here. Go basic, go there, go there. Can you see a picture of a nice heron? Yes. Hey, uh, here we go. I'll zoom it in. And that's that. I like that one because, to be fair, that's probably one of the best pictures I've seen of, of the night herons that we've had in the county recently. It's kind of out in the open and you can see the eye really clearly as well the red eye and the yellow legs. And yeah, little cracker. So thank you for sending those in, Mo. That's brilliant. Yeah. Right. Here we go. And apologies for the, the best, beginning. That's one of the best pictures I've seen of the not Aberton night heron. So mm. yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. Really cool. Well, yeah. I wonder if that's going to be something that we, uh, I won't say see regular, but as we've had the egrets coming along, maybe that's the next species that uh, could start to colonise um, south of England and, and mm. uh, move up through Essex and who knows where else. I, yeah, think they I, I was going to say, I think they tried to nest down in the Somerset levels a couple of years ago, night herons. Right. Um, mm. I think they did anyway. I've got a funny feeling I heard that somewhere. It's just interesting because, like you said, we've had little egret, cackle egret, great white egret, um, uh, spoonbills last year in Essex, didn't, or last two years in Essex, and now we've got night herons dropping in. So it's, it, it seems to be all the herony type birds that are kind of making their way over. Yeah, and I think also, I mean, certainly for this year, there's quite a drought in southern Spain. Um, so, you know, lack of water pushes birds north. So, mm. you know... If that happens more often, then that you know it's what we like to see them, like you say. Yeah, they've had se severe temperatures again in Spain, haven't they? Forty degrees, and it's mm. very early in the season for that. So yeah, yeah, could be a sign. Might might be might be one to look out for. Um, right. So where did you go today, Jerry? Uh, I had the pleasure of going to uh, Essex Wildlife Trust Hanningfield Reservoir where we had uh, 16, I think it was, uh, people come along to join us. Some people I knew, some people for the first time, and they were very welcome. Mm -hmm. And we thank the staff at Hanningfield Reservoir there for uh, opening the gates a little early for us so we could get in and get set up ready. And uh, we looked out the windows of the uh, area there onto the feeders and saw absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 Apart from a monk jack deer going across, which is in front of us, which was nice. And then sitting on top of one of the nest boxes out there was a, a lovely stock dove. Oh, good. It was very nice to see rather than just seeing it fly past and that too, mm -hmm. able to see it. And everybody got good views of it. Good, good, good. Made our way outside through the, um, through the path. And it was quite dry underfoot, to say the least, considering we've had a bit of rain recently. Um, leaves on the trees were coming out, some were more advanced than others, but generally we had good views up into the canopy. Uh, we could hear quite a lot of bird song, to say the least, probably like you, Steve, around the, the woods there. Um, obviously, robin, blackbird, black cap, uh, song thrush, and the like, wren occasionally exploding their beautiful call. And uh, we ambled down and went in our first hide on the left hand side the lister hide um water levels are very high at hanningfield at, at, i would assume that they've been pumping in to get ready for summer make sure that we uh, don't run out of water so it, the water was right up under the hide whereas that's really only come up in the last two or three months um leaving hardly any space or no space really for waders um, the island out to the right side, that was an island rather than a peninsula. And uh, we saw a few things on there. We had uh, probably our only wader, I think, which was a single oyster catcher. Um, some lovely Egyptian geese, mm -hmm. mute swans. And then out on the water, there was a number of red crested potchard, which was lovely to see. I think there was nice. six, six out there. And then as we scanned around and looked across on the reed beds on the far side, we had a couple of marsh harriers quartering uh, quite low over the reeds. So that was good to see over there. Yep. Um, we had Jiff Jaff singing um, and other birds as we ambled around. 
didn't um, we, we thought we had gold crest, but that wasn't confirmed. We didn't see any, um, but we did have good views of uh, long tail tits that were moving around um, in their little family groups and calling as they were. Mm. The water was quite a lot of swallows and something that I hadn't seen for this season yet was a uh, first swifts of the year, which which were, which, which were good. They were uh, moving across the water, which was quite calm, um, no wind as such. So they were quite happily feeding up on uh, insects, which were probably down on the water level, which was uh, good to see. Hmm. Um, we had, I think it was four or five common turn. Uh, no, no sign of the uh, black wing turn that was there a little earlier uh, last week. But uh, yeah, a couple, see, couple of days ago, I think there was a couple of white wing black turns there, weren't there? And they kind of went through, unfortunately. Okay. So, yeah, we, we we sort of tried, and you know, even with a bit of imagination, we couldn't. Uh, you should have you should have taken a picture and got a marker pen out and just coloured yeah. one of the things, <laughs> and you could have gone, look what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do claim to have seen probably the rarest bird of the uh, the weekend, which is um, helmeted guinea fowl. <laughs> <laughs> Our dear friends on the Gallywood Commons, I went across it there. They were out uh, early uh, on the common there, which is, uh, yeah, quite comical as you uh, go through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, probably. Then we went right the way down to the um, bay that overlooks the fishing lodge there and to uh, Oak Hyde and Point Hyde. And between the two, uh, we had a lovely garden warder, warbler singing. Um, Good. Nice. Did a little uh, call and it came very close to us and, and uh, black cap down there. But that was a lovely bird. You mm. good views, see the colour on it. And that, it was uh, very pleasurable, to say the least. Mm. Um, yeah, so we had a great day. Yeah, and as I say, nothing uh, grand. The garden warble was very nice. I think we had something like about 36, 38 species, which are uh, going just for a woodland wet area on the water. Uh, no, no mud as such for waders. I think that was a, a very rewarding day for us. That's, that's the thing. I think the levels are generally quite high at the moment, aren't they? They're not yeah. very high. Yeah, mm. going to be even high. higher by the end of today. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of it's in Matt's coat. It's, uh... <laughs> well, my, mine was probably well, empty too. So uh... <laughs> technically, it's on the floor of the visitor centre. To be fair, because I tipped it out there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. she, the, the young lady there Rebecca it was, it was actually incidentally really really helpful we'll come come on to Raynham later on but um she did say as I left she said look what you've done to my floor I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> hi <laughs> I said sorry the water's pouring out but I'm sorry <laughs> yeah she didn't give you a mop then to, to tidy it up then man no no I, sh I should have offered really but we kind of had to go so yeah no, she was I lovely she was, right. she, was she was very right. helpful was, yeah, yeah very helpful um yeah, good. Excellent. And did the weather kind of hold for you? Just about and towards the end, it started to get a little bit of light rain but because we were in uh, in the woods, so it really didn't affect us at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Curtailed it a little bit early, uh, but people went back into the centre and uh, were pleased to have a hot drink, a uh, yeah. slice of cake, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. The reserve there, I can always recommend that. And uh, had a good day. I think probably the last bird we saw was... Or, yeah, was green woodpecker in the car park. Oh, that's good. It was nice. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Yeah, typical species. Sorry? A typical woodland species we had. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Were there any cold tits down there or not? Because I'm finding it hard to connect with cold tits. Yeah, they they weren't easy. It was thought we heard them, but again, it was looking up into the canopy, into mm. the dark. Uh, couldn't find any in the conifers there. So, same with tree creepers, unfortunately. Uh, we expected to see some of those a couple of those mm -hmm. uh, again it, uh, we yeah. dipped out on them unfortunately hmm. okay well um any comments steve anything in the yeah old, uh... i was I, you've just oh. reminded me something matt if oh, i might sorry. Is, uh, um you know we all worry about artificial intelligence taking our jobs and, th and, and so on well mm. on this walk i did this morning um two guys had got some app on their phones that actually will listen, you know, listen to the bird song and, and tell you what species it is. So mm. all of a sudden I found myself kind of like, you know, having my homework marked as I was going around. 
But the re- <laughs> well, the, so maybe next year they can do the walk. But the reason I mention it is because, um, by and large, luckily, the app agreed with what I said I could hear, except that one of them recorded a tree creeper, which no one else in the group actually heard. Okay. So it's a sort of a bizarre little sort of incidence of technology actually sort of, you know, taking over from um, us poor old humans. I think the app might be this one, possibly. I, I, I it may well blurry, be. I, don't, yeah. I didn't look at it. Is it blurry? Sorry. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit blurry. So, I didn't look at it, so I don't know. No. So th- this is, um, we've covered this before, I think, on the show, haven't we, Steve? We did. We covered bird yeah. song recording apps or bird mm. song ID apps, yeah. And to be oh, fair, really this is an app called Merlin. It's free. Um you can. I, I didn't know really about the recording side of it that much until a week ago because the guy um, I actually work with, I came into the shop and he's interested in birds. And I said, oh, there's a lesser white throat singing in the corner of the car park. And he went running outside and came back in five minutes later and said, you're right, there is one. And I <laughs> said, well, yeah, OK, I, yeah, I thought there was. And then he yeah. said, no, look, my phone tells me. And the app basically it records the bird and it gives you a sonogram as well. It's very good. But it's not it's not 100 percent. It does come up with some weird things. He had an American Robin as, as he went into town, according to the app. Yeah, so we, we, we had a purple finch. Oh, that's, that's a good record. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Better come and see that then. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but like you said, it's, it's quite good because if you're if you're listening and you think that's a zone, you know, that's a wren, that's a black cat, that's a garden warbler. If the phone is corroborating what you think it is, then it's it's a good way to check yourself. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, Paul had the same thing this morning. He, he said that uh, American Robin came up on uh, on his app for something. I can't remember what he said oh. it was now, actually. But uh, so there must be something similar yeah. to an American Robin. Maybe there's yeah. an influx of American Robins. We don't know about. Hey, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So um, our day started uh, quite interestingly, Steve. Have we got any comments on the chat? First of all, we've got uh, Richard Chu did say um, in 2017 a pair of night herons uh, raised two young at West Hay Moor in Somerset. Okay, which okay. was the first UK breeding record. So, wow. it, what year was that, Steve? Uh, 2017. Okay, so relatively recently. So. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, and then David L. Smith says, uh, this is to you, Jerry, that helmeted guinea, guinea fowl are also at Benton Hall, Whit- Whitton. Okay. But they're not on his list, he said. <laughs> no, nor mine, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think they, it was a little like winky face there, so I think perhaps they are. So uh, <laughs> He's keeping that in reserve, isn't he? If he's one short of the uh, top of the leaderboard at the end of the event, I think he'll slide it in. sneak him underneath and hope no one notices. <laughs> um, and then Mel Shepherd wells has just joined us. He said, sorry for his late arrival. No excuses. Um, he said, that, yeah, the Merlin bird app he used today. Um, he said he, he thinks he's a more sort of rounded birder now and it hones your senses. So, mm. um, and then Richard Chews just said, there's another warbler app called, sorry, another bird call app called Warbler. It's without okay. the e, e in warbler. Um, okay. He says, but he doesn't know if it's any good or not. So, okay. Well, perhaps we'll try it. Well, one thing I did find... One thing I did find with Merlin, because anyone that's been out with me knows that I've got a little bit of mild tinnitus, and so it tends to kind of mask really quiet sounds. It's not the pitch, it's the volume. You can't see that. I can't see that, no. No, rubbish. <laughs> Looks like you're at some kind of a gig or something. You just wave it around. <laughs> um, so, yeah, mild tinnitus, and I, I can't hear really, really quiet sounds. So it was picking up things like chiff-chaff, and I thought, I can't hear a chiff-chaff. And then as I walked further on, I could hear a chiff-chaff. So it is quite useful just to have it on definitely um but i'd still like to try and work out what they are myself so the americans the americans use merlin for the sounds all the time right you know they don't almost they, they almost don't try and identify it themselves they just use the phone mm. which you know takes the sort of enjoyment out of it you know it bit like using a sat nav instead of a map yeah it takes the skills away and i think it dilutes things yeah yeah definitely um but yes we started what 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 happened this morning oh so i went i went and picked up um andrew allen from rittle because rittle's on the way to aberton from colchester of course <laughs> it, it is in my book anyway it i actually worked out i think everywhere leads to aberton you were so using just, the nav again matt that's the thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter where wherever you go you're going to end up at aberton anyway so you might as well go wherever you want to go first but uh, uh i picked him up and you you had um 
you had a, a, a bit of a surprise this morning, didn't you, Steve? Because you had a job yes, to do. Sir. I had to go into Colchester today to pick a minibus up for a tour that I'm doing next week. And uh, I, I said to Matt, I'll ring you when I'm leaving Colchester to give you my ETA. So um, I rang Matt and said, right, I'll be six minutes or so. And he said, I'm running a bit late. Um, I won't get to Aberton until like yeah. 25 I- past nine. I said, I've just, I've just left home. I've got to pick up Andrew. I'm going to be there in about 40 minutes. Yeah, I'll be picking you up at 25 past nine and we were due at Aberson at half past. I went, I went, oh no, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make my own way there then. We need to be late. <laughs> I thought it was quite a good way to start the day because if you start the day like that, it can only get better, can't it? But uh, yeah, so I picked you up. We didn't go via McDonald's for anyone watching. Um, we've, oh. we've, been, we've been very good today. Yeah. Mm. And um, we did go to the Lair Breton Causeway though first, didn't we? And what happened, Steve, as we got near to the Lair Breton Causeway? You tell the story because I don't want to listen so to it again. We, to be we, fair, we were we were coming from the north, so we were heading south. And as we were driving along, I looked out the window, and there's a spoonbill, like in a tree. So I'm going spoonbill, spoonbill, stop the car. I, I'm driving at this point, so you know I can't. I'm I'm like this. I'm yeah. So, and then, of course, it's typically where we saw the spoonbill was on the bend of the road. And Matt said, I can't stop there. I can't stop there. It's not safe. So by the time we pulled over, we then we then looked at the tree, couldn't see the spoonbill. So then we walked back up along the road and we just heard this guy whistle to us. And it's like, oh, wonder what he wants. Anyway, carried on walking and then met him. And he said, did you see the spoonbill fly past you? And it's like, no. <laughs> So we were all looking that way and it's gone kind of that way past us. So Steve has got Spoonbill on his list, but unfortunately, Andrew and I haven't. And if if Andrew's watching, I apologise. I should have just pulled over quickly and, and had a quick look because, yeah, but there you go. Not to worry. Um, but what else did we see? Um, yeah, which is nice. Which is nice to get, catch up with some common wildfowl. We had a nice pair of marsh harriers um, doing a mm-hmm. food pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah which is hopefully, fingers crossed, sign of potential breeding because I don't think they've ever bred at Aberton before. So nothing proved anyway. So mm. that would be nice. Uh, we had a cuckoo in a tree, yep. didn't we, Matt? And then... Yep, right at the back. I had sedge warbler as we got out of the yep. car. Uh, we had a, a pair of gold eye. Yeah, gold eye. Yeah, gold eye. Mm. Mm. And then, then Tom, that, that happened. Oh, then we had a report came through of a pair of gargany mm. um, from Billets Farm. So we... It, we had to drive past Billets Farm to get to the centre. So, of course, it'd be rude not to go and see those. Quick stop. So, quick stop. We saw those and then mm. we headed to the centre to meet everyone ready for the guided walk. Mm. And we had a good number. We had, I think, 18 people this yep. morning. Um, if I can bring it up quickly, I'll to get a group picture. But, yeah, um, I mean, in the car park, we had a good number of Swifts flying over, didn't we? Yep. Same as you, Jerry. Yeah, it was good numbers of Swifts today. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. First, first real sort of quantities or first mm. I've seen actually, and they were in good numbers. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Definitely. I think the slightly dodgy weather today just kept them down lower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we had a good good group turn up. Um, and I think that's kind of most of us stood there on the old sluice at, and on the causeway. And thanks once again um, to everybody that attended all of the walks today at all of the different locations. It was really, you know, very much appreciated. Yeah. Um you're giving up your time to come out with us guys and, and go bird watching. And it's really, really good fun. Um, but uh, we, we do it because of you lot out there. So it's, it's great that you come along. Um, we went out through the car park entrance and turned right. And um, what did we find next? Well, we did have rather splendid. And I say that, in fact, better than splendid. It was amazing views of Nightingale. Hmm. Oh, nice. Hmm. Wow. So yeah, this particular nightingale, although you can't see it in Matt's picture there, um, has got a ring on its right leg. Uh, so we think it's probably been ringed locally, maybe at the western end um, of Aberton. But this particular bird is very, very showy. Mm. It really does sit up in the tree and it's been there for several weeks now. But it's, yeah, it's excellent views. Did you, did you get a shot of the ring at all? Or? Uh, no, uh, no, Matt, I don't think I did. I think that was the second time because it, it was it was up high to start with. It then flew off, and then it came back again a few minutes later. That's the second time it came back. The first time, it was really you know very very on show. Yeah, so there's mine. Yeah, but you, you can, can just, just see it. You can, you can just, just see the ring. Yeah, the ring's just about here. Yeah, yeah. on its leg. 
Um, but yeah, it's absolutely. Quite, well, it's quite interesting because I think I had that bird um, a couple of weeks ago croaking to start with. Mm. And then it went into full song because I didn't. I thought only the females croak, but I think they both do, don't they? Mm. Yeah, so that's good. And then we wandered down the causeway. We headed sort of vaguely towards Billets because there's a really good flood opposite Billets at the moment, which has had some good birds on it recently. So we thought we'd, we'd have a look at that. Um, and along the causeway, we had nice views of Common Turn. Um, really, really close in, actually, just perched up. Uh, here we go. Nice, nice common turn. Look how close that is. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Close. yeah. Beautiful. And one, one flew over with a, a nice fish in its mouth as well. Oh, beautiful. Which is always good. Um, and we had Kingfisher on the, on the main causeway. Yeah. Which was yep. very nice. Um, and we had various bits and pieces sort of singing and skylarks were singing. There was linnets at the far end. Um, and really nice group of great crested grebes, probably about 20, 25, I think. Mm -hmm. Just all asleep in the middle of the reservoir. And the swans, how many swans were there? Oh, it was about 60 or 70 sw mute swans all together. So yeah. Group, which was I don't think I've seen that many mute swans at, at Habiton in, at the same time. Not certainly on this time of year anyway. So. No, it's, it's, I, I would say it's quite unusual, but mm. maybe, um, maybe I've just never noticed them before. Mm. And then obviously um, we went down to the oh, Fadden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, better, I better get myself a field guide <laughs> <laughs> well we had uh, talking about white birds actually we had little egrets there as well didn't we but no great white egret today i think they've all kind of disappeared or maybe doing their own thing somewhere else um oh, but the flood by the, by the well by the time we got down to the flood the gargany had disappeared unfortunately they gone so and of course the night heron that was here yes sorry there yesterday mm. wasn't seen today the pectoral sandpiper had done a friday night flit Mm -hmm. um, but we still saw some good stuff, didn't we? It was just nice. We did. Well, there was four black-tailed gobbets feeding nicely in the middle. There was we had probably yeah. seven green shank all together, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were swallows. There did we get San Martin at Aberton? I think we did. No. Did we not? Oh no, that was at Raynham. That was at Raynham. No. Um, but yeah, it was just good numbers of we had marsh harrier at Aberton, yeah. um, which was good. And yeah, just good numbers of the normal sort of regular wildfowl this time of year. There was singing chiff chaff, singing black cap. Um, just a really nice walk up and walk down with a, with a good group of people. On the way back through, sorry, Joe, go on. Do you think the high water level has affected what the numbers that you saw there? Um, I think certainly in Wigbra Bay, for example, the water level's so high, there's no edge left now. So there's no no waders in there at all. Yeah, uh, sure. well, I say that there were three or four green shanks just at roosting on, on the grass bund. Um, and I think that's probably why the flood opposite has been really good because the water level there is relatively low. Uh, so the waders can go over there and have a bit of a feed up. Um, but yeah, then we wandered back. We were looking for garden warbler and willow warbler that have been reported there. I think Andrew heard a willow warbler, yeah. um, but we didn't manage to connect. And then the centre, uh, we had little grebe outside the, the centre itself, yeah. which is nice. Um, so yeah, just a really good, good day or good morning at Aberton with. What was the number of species we had in the end there? Do you know? 64, we, we, you and I recorded. Yeah. As a group, as a group. I think uh, a couple of people stayed a bit later and recorded a few other species. But yeah, 64, which was pretty, pretty good. Yeah, good. Really good. And then we, oh, I think we might have just lost Steve. Okay. Steve's had enough okay. of us walking on. <laughs> <laughs> if he joins us again, I'll let him in, of course. Um, so yeah, we, we hot footed down to Raynham. We did. Yep. Mm. And I think with the emphasis on rain. Yeah, it mm. was. I mean, to be fair, we've been so lucky so far with the weather and you knew it was going to, it was forecast for tomorrow, uh, today. Um, so, yeah, we had a rather damp afternoon and we uh, we met up with Jerry. Um, yep. He was having his about third cup of tea for the afternoon. And we also finally met Frankie. Frankie Robertson, thank yes. you. For, thanks for coming today, Frankie. Um, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, we got yeah. to meet him. Yeah, and uh, I know, you got some, yeah. yeah, I know you got lots of good photographs today of um, uh, quite a few species that he wanted to see. So, uh, yeah, no, absolutely spot on. Really, really good to meet Frankie because uh, he's been threatening to come to one of our walks for a little while, hasn't he? So, I'm, I'm glad he managed to make make it along, and hopefully, we'll see him at more in the future. That'd be nice. Um, also, Matt, just before we start, can I just say thanks to Heather Short and Sass Parker for when we were at Aberton this morning, um, Sass slipped a paper note into my hand 
and it was a little thank you for our, um, and something towards coffee and a snack to keep us going mm. over the weekend because they're both really enjoying our shows. Um, and it was just a thank you. So thank you so much, guys. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Really, really generous. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, Raynham, um, it was very damp, but we got a really nice welcome at the centre. Um, young lady in the centre who's only been there a month and a half, Rebecca. Uh, she was very helpful, yep. very keen to tell us where all the birds were and, and to ask what we were, you know, what we were going to be doing and and which was the best route to take. So some big thumbs up for Rebecca at, uh, at Raynham. Um, and we sort of made our way through and well, what, what did we get? Well, you know, again, the weather, I mean, the weather was atrocious, but, you know, we said about the Swifts. There were hundreds of Swifts just low yeah. coming past our heads. They were just, yeah, really, really nice. But, yeah, lots of lots of breeding species. So oyster catchers, lapwings, red shank, um, nice lot of shoveler flying around. We had another, at least two hobbies um, hawking low over the reed bed. Yep. Um, we, had the, um, we, had, we had chetties, we had black caps, we had... There was robins singing. There was blue tits and a great tit, and all the all the sort of normal small birds you'd expect. Um, white throats are putting on a good show. Yeah, reeds, reeds sedge. In the, yeah, in the reeds and that is the reeds. Actually, as you walked along the lower path, there were full of them, weren't they? Mm, very much so. Um, so we we got a group shot at. Um, well, I forgot to take a group shot actually, unfortunately. But uh, Jerry, thank you very much. You managed to take a shot of us all bird watching so that's that's everyone in action there which is uh really really good i'm very happy to um to have seen so many nice things ominous looking sky coming in there that's before the rain started oh. mm. i'm just gonna say that yeah the, the path's quite dry there yeah. mm. i think it was about 10 minutes after that that it started to rain didn't it, it did. yeah um talking of reed warbler i managed to get a shot of uh obviously through the reeds but managed to get oh, a shot that. of one of them singing away which was good mm. Good. And um, yeah, I'm keeping you up. Yeah, no, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the white throats were, were showing nicely. Um, it's common white throat. And uh, then we had beautiful views of a linnet on the way up to the, the Seren Mound, didn't we? And by this point, you can see the rain had started to come down. Um, but this linnet, even though it was pouring with rain, it was still it was sitting there and it was singing. And um, yeah, just doing its thing. Um, but from the Serian Mound, we'd obviously headed up there for a good old scan of the the marsh at the end. But we were looking for one bird in particular, weren't we? We were. So as mm. you as we saw on last night's show, um, Ben Rumsby, who was on our guest on last night, um, was hoping that the black wing stilt would stay for us today, mm. and it did. It, it definitely. Did. Yeah, first time ever they've stayed for more than one day. So, uh, and yep. uh, I know it was seen, seen this morning, and luckily it stayed for us this afternoon, which was excellent. Yep, definitely. And Frankie hadn't seen a black wing stilt before, I don't think. So um, he was very pleased to see one of those. And I took a photograph that uh, Steve Hallam, you'd be proud of this one. Here we go. Um, that's my black wing stilt photo. Yes. Oh, okay. Look at that. A <laughs> little bit of little bit of rain on the lens, I think. There, we'll say, Matt. Well, to be fair, it was a bit distant, and I couldn't get it was too far for the camera. So I popped my phone on the scope, and the scope had got rain on it. Hence the big blobby thing down here, and the wind was blowing it as well. So that's my excuse, anyway. But you can just about make out what it is, or yeah, it could be. I've got a slightly better picture than that. Oh, go for it, go for it. When I say slightly better, so put, put me uh, out of my misery, please. So let me just share. So uh, we've got so. The Nightingale from Aberton. Yep. I've got to find the button to do it. Oh, why won't it work? Hold on, just bear with me a second. Let me stop sharing a minute. It's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> you know where it all goes? Oh, why won't it work? Do you know what? Technology is a wonderful thing. I think I've got Steve's bug now. Right, let's start again. But while you're finding it, Steve, it was showing well. It, was, it wasn't tucked in behind anything. Mm. Got good views, as you saw. They're out in the open. Yes, they were distant, but uh, it, it was good to see it, as you say, staying on for a second day at least. Right. Yeah, so and even, even from distance, you get that pink bubble gum egg uh, leg effect, don't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, there's Matt's or Matt or Al in it. Yep. And there you go. There's a better. Oh, that's much better. It's not Thank brilliant you. by any means. That was just taken with the big camera, but uh, that was a long, long way away. I mean, you yeah. can just sort of see the bubble gum legs and the 
<laughs> the black wings. Yep, yep. So that's as good as I got today. Yeah. That's infinitely better. Mine could have just been a dodgy green shank, so that's much, much better. <laughs> we did have green shank up the end there as well, didn't we? Which is a nice bird. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, again, really good walk. And we had a good number, didn't we, of, of species? I think 64 or two. Uh, let me just check. Uh, rain and rain and rain and rain and rain them. Oh, 61 we had. Yeah, 61, so it's... similar to Aberton. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. And obviously, there are quite a lot of different species there as well. So, mm. so yeah, excellent. Yeah, really good day out. And, uh, yeah, and say that. And we had quite a few new people come this afternoon as well. Yeah, which was... it's always good to see new faces, and um, I think everyone, even with the pouring rain, everyone enjoyed themselves. And and it doesn't matter what the weather's like. We were saying last night, going birding after it's rained can can sometimes be really really good. And even yeah. during the rain, it brings the swifts down, as Jerry was saying. And and yeah, you can still see stuff. You know, yeah. you won't see there'll be stuff at Aberton and Raynham tomorrow that's been dropped in by the rain the night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, we've got some pictures, some things have been sent in, then we'll have a quick look at, at what's happening tomorrow. So, um, yeah, we've got first of all, comments as well. So, yeah. Oh, goody good. Well, do you want to run through a couple of those? Yeah, we've got, um, where are we going now? That's gone for, for, yeah, Ron Colson said he was sorry to have missed Aberton today. He, he basically wore himself out at Holland Haven in the Nays yesterday, uh, poor guy, and his legs wouldn't work this morning. So, now we appreciated you coming yesterday, Ron. So uh, yeah, just take it easy and hope to see you soon. Um, Paul Everett says there were the reports of the Peck Sandpiper at Aberton again this afternoon on bird guides. So oh, uh, okay. And then uh, Mo Jackson saw fifty plus mute swans uh, uh, south of the Lay of Breton Causeway in the field. Um, right. At three o'clock. Um, I wonder if they were the ones that were on the water in the morning. Yeah, they may have just come Indeed, onto yeah. the water to wash and brush up and then mm. go back to feed. Interesting. And then Frank, Frankie said it was so nice to see us all today and he's just uploading some photos. So, uh, oh, excellent. Which, which he may send in, Matt. But uh, well, if, if, you, if you ping him across in about the next 10, 12 minutes, no, no pressure because we can always show him tomorrow. Um, but if you do ping him across, we'll try and flick through them now. Yeah. Um, right, so I have got Ben Rumsby. Um, unfortunately, Ben can't be with us, but he was on last night. Um, but Ben did his young birders walk at Raynham and there's a picture. I think it was uh, you've got Ben on the right. You've got Ben Mapp in the middle and Ben Mapp's father next to him. I'm not sure who the young gentleman on the left is, Steve. I don't know if you recognise him. No, I don't know. And this is one of Ben's uh, Ben Mapp's brothers or I don't know. I have no idea. If yeah, it could be another young, bird, yeah, another young birder that's come along. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, no, excellent. I think he had a good a uh, good total of birds. I think it was around about the 70 mark we heard from uh, Rebecca at RSPV yeah. Raynham. That's and really good. Yeah, yeah it's good. Saw him. Him. Sorry, go on, Jerry. I say I saw him as I arrived at uh, the car park. Um, they, they'd done some birding earlier in the morning. I can't remember what time he was up, but it was um, quite early looking around. And I think uh, including those, it was over 80. But he said on the reserve, it was something like 75, 76, from what I recall. That's so good. They had a really good day going around and uh, getting as much as they could. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, brilliant. So obviously he said yesterday about doing a younger birders versus older birders competition. So we think he had about 75 species today on the, on the walk, yeah. which, which is very good. And we had 62, 61. Yeah. Yep. But what we didn't tell him is you've got to take into account the weather. Now, the weather this morning at Rainham was actually not too bad. It was, it was as you saw earlier on from the picture, the paths were dry and the, and the weather was not, not bad at all. Weather this afternoon was absolutely terrible. So I think if you factor in the weather for this afternoon, we get a 1.5 multiplier on our total, yeah. which uh, takes us up to just over 90. So I think, I think we, we won. Um, <laughs> but no. Sorry, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Ben. Yeah, no, seriously, that's a really good total, Ben. And it's a great site. And um, it just shows you, yeah, the, the work that the RSPB do down there. It just attracts all these birds through and it's fabulous. Ben did send in a bit of audio. So I'm going to play this now. Hopefully. So I'll just stop it there quickly. Could you hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Play, so uh, play, play it again. I'm going to try Merlin. Oh, go on then. 
Hang on, we're mucking about here for a bit of fun. Put it, on, put it in the speaker then, hold on. When it comes up, American Robin. Right. So, comes up with two right. species, right? Two you, should, species. you should have white, white throat, black cap and gropper, hopefully. Well, and maybe even with rain. black cap and grasshopper warbler. Oh, yeah. that's all right. Yeah, it's good. Good, yeah. Just so, in those seven seconds that's, worth. That's impressive. That is really impressive. So for anyone out there listening, if you listen in the background, we're listening at we're really listening for the grasshopper warbler. Uh, that that was what he sent it in for. So you've got the reeling of the grasshopper warbler in the background. Hold on. There you go. Nice. Always good to hear. Um, and the thing is, with grasshopper warbler, you can't always tell where they are, can you? They can um, be singing and, and challenging. Yeah. Mm. Um, we got some absolutely fantastic, or a couple of lovely pictures through from David L. Smith. Um, so I'm just going to share the first one of those. That's a cracking picture. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love that. Really nice. Gorgeous. Where was that there. from, Matt? Um, I'm not sure that he actually I, think got... actually. I think it was actually, no, I do remember. It was Old Hall Marshes yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Cheers. Yep, I remember Yep. Um, so gorgeous yellow wagtail. And then the other picture he sent through was a little yellow hammer, male yellow hammer, just popping his head over the over the top there. Um, in fact, there that must be go. On. Is there a third one? Uh well, there there is. Well, I was just gonna say, because there's yellow the you had yellow wagtail, yellow hammer. I thought perhaps gold oriole was gonna be the next one. <laughs> oh no, no, sorry. No, okay. not a golden oriole, unfortunately. Okay. I just thought you never know. Might go Maybe freeze. next time. There was one there last year, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Uh, and in fact, you're definitely right because this has to be yesterday because the sun's shining. Look. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, so thank you for those. That's fabuloso. Um, we've had some others come in as well. So let's just run through those if I can work out how to do it. So one from yesterday, just very quickly from uh, Jackie Everett. Um, so do you remember the Kestrel on the post? Yeah. At Holland. So Jackie took a picture of the Kestrel on the post, but who's lurking in the background? Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. Mr. Munjack. Little Munjack. Yeah. So there you go. I, I quite like that. That's good. I like if, that. Well done, Jackie. I don't know if the Munjack was uh, watching Jackie or watching the Kestrel. I'm not sure. But uh, maybe we can we can ask it if it appears again. Um, and uh, what else? We've got Richard Chu. Here we go. Right. So I've got five pictures and a, I've done something special with one of the other pictures. So here we go. First picture is this one, which is obviously not where it should be, but that is a, or we think it's a long-tailed tit's nest. It certainly yeah, looks like right. it with yeah, all the definitely. feathers and moss and bits and pieces. Right. And I mean, it looks uh, superb, doesn't it? Beautiful. Absolutely right. beautiful. Um, you know, they, they work so hard to make those nests. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Um, I wonder what happened to it. No, don't know, but you can't well, tell what size that is. But that expands as the chicks move around in it, and, and it's mm. like an organ that is, is yeah, moving. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's kind of like a. It's virtually completely round with just a little hole, isn't it? Like a yeah, and proper... all held together with sort of spiders' yeah. webs, and yeah, mm. fabulous. Unbelievable. Um, we've got a jay, oh, which nice. you know, it's not good. It's not easy to get a nice picture of a jay, is it? That's good. No, I think we've said that before on some of the shows. They're not mm. the easiest. I, I don't think I've got a decent picture of a jay, ever. No. They're quite um, fleeting, aren't they? Oh. Definitely. Common white throat. Yeah. Very nice. Lovely. In full song there. And a right. male black cap doing the same thing. Good. I don't know if they were singing to each other. Look, that one might be singing to that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we heard these, didn't we, today? But we didn't see them. Yeah, the good old marsh frog. Marsh frog, marsh frog, definitely. And then the final one, hold on, let me just do this, because I think what I did with this final picture, I put a bit of audio over it as well. So um, Richard sent in an audio clip and he sent in a picture that kind of does tie in with it. So I managed to stick the two together very quickly. Hold on. I'm going to use Merlin while you play it. Oh, go for it. A minute. Um, how do I go back here? Desktop. Oh, Sorry. Normally slightly better prepared, but we're literally doing this up until the last second that we press the, the live button. Right. Can you see a picture of a nightingale? 
Yep. Yeah. So let's just enjoy 27 seconds of Richard's picture and Richard's soundtrack. Hold on. Here we go. It nice, took, nice rook to finish with in the distance as well. I like that. That was good. <laughs> it took 2.1 seconds to identify that as a nightingale. I got carrion crow come up from the background. Oh, it sounded like a rook. Well, crow or rook. Yeah, yeah. it sounded rooky. Okay. Yeah, good. Wow. Mm, excellent. Clever, isn't it? Clever. It's it good. is very clever. Um, and I think we've got some pictures from Frankie. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to just literally do this off the uh, off the browser, and then we'll have a quick look at tomorrow, and we're going to look at the running totals on the status screen as well, because, yep. Steve, you've kindly been updating those earlier on, haven't you? So I have, yep, yep, I've been right. doing that. Here we go. This might work, hopefully. So these are fresh off the press, and it's behind my camera, but it looks like Kestrel, yep. yep. Kestrel, very nice, in full hover. That was the one down at – well, these are all obviously for rain in this afternoon, aren't they? Yes. And we've got – oh, is that – oh, that's the Black Wing still. Yes. Excellent. Sorry, it's right behind my camera. <laughs> ah, red shank. Very nice. Nice shot. Thank you. And then, what's that? Is that a green shank? Uh, yes. Yep. It's, it's not, uh, yes, it is. Do you know uh, what? I'm, I'm just doing some reviewing of the BCBW sighting, so I wasn't actually watching. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I've literally got a great big camera right. I can see its tail without doing that. It looks like a green shank from the tail. My, um, my camera's right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> and we've got a grey lad goose having a go, at, or probably an avocet having a go at a grey lad goose, actually, you know what avocets are like. Yeah. So uh, fabulous. Thanks for sharing those, uh, Frankie. Thanks for getting them in so quickly as well. That's brilliant. Right. So should we have a look at some totals and see what's happening? And then we'll look at tomorrow as well. Yeah, go for it, mate. Go for okay. it. Okay. I would do if I had the total screen ready. Hang on. Uh, I'm just approve. I'm just actually approving a couple of. Uh, oh, go on then. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. What are you? What are you up to tomorrow, Jerry and Steve H? Steve, you go. Oh, you're on. You're on mute at the moment, Steve. Yeah, hey, uh, okay. I was, I, I was clicking on my thumbnail rather than on the icon. Well, I'm mm. going to. Um, I hear there's a fabulous walk tomorrow morning um, at Rabness, which is going to be the one to go on. So um, I'm planning to come to, to Rabness for the Dawn Chorus Walk at five. And then um, I've, uh, I'm have i actually spending most of the weekend um, sort of trying to do a deep dive into my local patch uh, around Fordham. And I'm just, I've got up to 58 species. So I'm trying to get to 60. So I reckon... My best chance of getting the next two are kind of flyovers. So mm. I'm planning to go and sort of take a, you know, flask of tea and a slice of cake or something and go and sort of sit down yeah. by the river and, and wait for um, exotic species to which you, somebody may have flushed out of Aberton or wherever um, and uh, fly down the river and uh, see if I can get to 60. Oh, fabulous. That'd be, good. Good, that'd be a good total. Really good total. What about you, Jerry? Um, tomorrow morning, I'm proposing to go and join um, Neil Neil Sumner at uh, Bowers Marsh for a, I think it's 9.30 start and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. two and a half hours walk around there, which is uh, is an excellent reserve. There's some good stuff seen around there. Um, so, yeah, but all we want is a little bit of dry weather just to uh, make it a little bit more pleasant, shall we say. Superb. Sounds good. Sounds good. Right. Let's refresh this screen. Well done, Steve. They're all up to date. So, yeah, good. The sightings reported so far, and we haven't had a chance to put all of ours on yet, have we? Um, oh, I haven't put any field on yeah. yet either, so. We're so busy doing all of this, but we'll get them on there. And don't forget, anyone watching, the portal will be live until the end of next week. We'll keep it live. So if you haven't had a chance to put your sightings on, you can do so by, we would say, next weekend. Probably probably take it down on Sunday. Um, so, yeah, that will still be there. Right, share screen. So the status screen. So far, we have... 61 entries um, with, from 39 locations with a total of 146 species seen. Now, if you'll just bear with me quickly, I don't know if this is going to work. Can you see a black screen with a, 
a bloke in it, or can you still see the other screen? The other screen. Right, yeah. hold on. That's good. So I'm going to stop share, and I'm going to go back to the other share that I've just brought up. Here we go. Can you now see the other screen again with an accept cookie thing down the bottom? Can you see yeah. that? Yeah. Lovely. Perfect. Right, here we go. So, yeah, 61 spe uh, entries to so far, 39 locations, 146 species. The species list for anyone that wants to have a look through is going to be on this button just here. And you can have a good old scroll through and see what's been seen and how many times and how many locations. Um, and we've got patch rankings. So what do you think the best patches so far? Random. Oh. Random. It could be random with Ben's effort today. Let's have a look. So number of species, if we search that. Still Holland Haven. Still yeah. Holland Haven with 78 species in total, which was a combination, I think, of the visit that we had yesterday and obviously Paul Brayshaw's amazing efforts that he put, puts in. Um, number of species 60 down there, but he saw more than that today. So I would suggest he hasn't updated yet. Possibly, yeah, possibly so. Right, uh, Ben's on Ben's on 60, yeah. So he may be still adding adding sightings. Um oh, but yeah. no ab sorry, Matt. There's no oh, so there is Abberton on there, but there's only 42. That's because we haven't put ours on from today. Oh, oh do you know what? Yeah, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that'll be that'll be up the list again tomorrow, hopefully. Um, and a big shout out to Mo on, on her on their farm, Mo and Dave. Um, Mo Jack and Dave Dutton on the farm out near uh, Wivenhoe. 46 species from the farm, which is absolutely fabulous. So they do some really good work out there. Um, so yeah, loads of good stuff on there. And then who has seen the most? I think I know who's going to be number one at the moment. And it is the gentleman that walked about 1,700 miles yesterday, I would imagine. Oops, wrong column. There we go. Yes. So Paul Brayshaw on 116 species. And they, they were all seen yesterday. I don't know if anyone saw the tweet I put out um, last night. But uh, his 16.3-mile walk yielded 116 species by foot in one day in Essex, Crazy. which I think is absolutely amazing. Yeah, really, really good. So that's all on the site. You can also, from our website, um, you can click on the record button at the top of the screen there. And it goes through to this, this next screen where you can choose to either enter your records as you normally would do or use the portal that we've just used. So you can take part in the Big County Bird Watch weekend whenever you're out birding in the county until the end of Monday. And we put a, a um, line in red there. Please note that if you use this portal, your records will still be forwarded to the county recorder in the normal manner. So don't feel if you want your records to count, they've got to go this side because both types of recording will count. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, please bear that in mind. Can I, can I just say a big thank you to uh, Andrew Duckett for helping behind the scenes with the uh, technology and to get it all set up. Well done, Andrew. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So Very good. Job, big job this is, yeah. Oh yeah, massive. Um, right, what's going on tomorrow? So tomorrow, well, yes, I'm kicking off tomorrow with 4.30. Um, so I'm doing a dawn chorus at Fingeringhoe in the morning, but this is a, a an EWT, Essex Wildlife Trust event. So please, if you haven't booked on the on the actual event with the Wildlife Trust, please do not turn up 4.30 because you won't be able to join us, uh, unfortunately. But mm. you do have a chance to come around with us later in the day, though. So, so yeah. So, yeah, I'm kicking off for three hours at 4.30. Hmm. And then, and then so at five, you, yeah, then at five o'clock, it's a dawn chorus at the EWT Reserve at Rabness on the Stour with Mark Nowers and Steve Hallam. There's a misprint on there. It's got my name on it. I'm going to be in bed. Um, Steve's, Steve's kindly just volunteered to take my place. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark and I are going to be leading a, a dawn chorus walk. Um, it's quite funny, actually. We had a conversation on the phone earlier with each other and we were both saying, sh shall I ring you to make sure you're awake? And, and up and out and ready so um we'll be there um so yeah we're going to be finding out what's what's at Rabness. hopefully um all the warblers um nightingale fingers crossed we may well hear or see turtle dove um garden warbler would be nice and then we should have enough time because it's a three-hour walk to walk right the way through have a look at the river and maybe even do the circuit as well so possibility of uh yellow hammer um linnets and other sort of farmland type birds there was a ring oozle there a few days ago, but I don't think it's been reported recently, but you never know. Uh, should get Cuckoo too. It's normally a good sight for Cuckoo. Um, then on to the next walk, Steve. So Simon Wood. So he's the society president. 
he'll be leading a walk at Haybridge Pits, which is his local patch, um, just at Haybridge Basin. And if you meet in the Daisy Meadow car park at 9 a.m., um, there are, is a car parking machine there, so you do need to pay for parking. It's relatively cheap, though. Um, and Simon will take you around the pits. Um, the tide will be on its way in, so there should be lots of waders still, lots of black-tailed godwits. And there's certainly breeding common terns and other um, reed bed species on the pits. So, and Simon Wood's excellent naturalist, so you'll see loads with Simon. So, yeah, if we weren't going to be doing other things about it, I think I'd have joined Simon. Well, you know what? I, I said the other night I've never been out birding with Simon. I'd like to at some point because yeah. um, I'm sure I'd learn an awful, awful lot of spending a few hours out in the field with Simon. Um, and then Gary, um, you'll, you'll be at the next one. So do you well, want to... Neil, Neil, the 9.30 at uh, Bowers Marsh, Neil Sumner is the uh, leader there. And, and um, it's a two and a half hour walk around the RSPB reserve. Um, at SS132HG is the car park. Um, yeah, and we look forward to seeing as many people down there as wish to come along for a, a, around the, the reserve there. It's good habitat. Oh. Um, there was probably reed, reed uh, bunting, sedge warbler, um, bearded tits as well. Yep. We can expect to see there, and who knows whatever might be on the, the water there. So. Uh, mm. Look for a good my, my, I think the weather's set a bit fairer tomorrow, so uh, be yeah, good. yeah, yeah. The forecast tomorrow is dry all day, maybe up to eighteen or nineteen degrees tomorrow. So uh, mm. I might even keep my shorts on again. I guess I'll, I'll keep the t-shirt on. Well, um, they're currently they're currently hanging up drying at the moment, but uh, I'll be wearing them again tomorrow. So hard luck. Uh, got a good yeah, chance um, of good chance of grasshopper warbler down there as well, Jerry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we're doing a couple of fingering, aren't we, Steve? So, yeah, so 10 o'clock and 1.30 p.m. So they're each, uh, we're doing two walks, both for two and a half hours at Fingering Her Wick. Um, we've also got our, Annette and I have got our swallow birding stand in the centre. Pete Dwyer, the membership secretary, will have the Essex Bird Watching Society stand. And uh, we'll be, have merchandise for sale. So if you fancy a baseball cap or a notepad, shopping bag, umbrella, we'll have all those for sale. If you'd like to join the society, come along um, and join. We've got uh, bird reports and Essex birding magazines for sale. Oh, what else we've got? We've just got lots of stuff. Yeah, happening. there'll be loads right. of stuff. Yeah, books and bags and baseball caps and loads of loads of things. So it's just going to be an interesting still, loads of stuff to look at. Steve still will be there. Obviously, Steve runs Swallow Birding. He does loads of uh, local trips and trips further afield. So um, please come along, have a look at that. And Enjoy the bird watching walks. We've got two to do, and I'm sure we'll find loads of good stuff. Uh, they yeah, open the and, Margaret Hides uh, accessible again, isn't it? Now, so we can get up the, the end. Yeah. So we'll we'll probably the tide will be certainly coming in in the morning, and then sort of probably dropping in the afternoon. So we'll head out try and find some waders. Obviously, it's great for nightingales. Uh, there are some orchids as well to uh, have a look at on our way out. Mm. Um, and yeah, maybe good. The weather's been grotty today, so maybe tomorrow good for birds of prey. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Oh, also, yeah, we'll to see. Stand tomorrow, Pete's going to have a number of um, second-hand books for uh, re relevant donations, which have been kindly donated to the society by Mike Loganwood, who's a great supporter of the society, um, raising a little bit of funds for them. Superb quality books. Um, there's, I think Pete's got a copy of The Birds of Essex, so if anybody yeah. would like one, he's got one of those. Um I can't remember all the others there, but he's got quite a good selection as well. And I think somebody showed some interest in these green signs yesterday. Yes. Uh, we've got a couple of those, I think, uh, available. So uh, bring your hard-earned cash along. and uh, so Yeah, we'll... we're going to have the pin... Yeah. pin badges. Yeah. Yeah, they're Just good. Nice pin badges will be for sale tomorrow. Excellent. All, every best-dressed birder should have one. So, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Neil's just put in the chat the grasshopper warbler was reeling at Bowers yesterday, but nothing is guaranteed. Absolutely. True, true. You never know. Yeah, good. Right. I think any more messages, Steve? Anything we had? Because you know where uh, we're at. Uh, oh, we've got loads, actually. Hang on. Um, so, yeah, Frankie was just saying thank you. He's uploaded his pictures. Tom Harris, he's got a photo similar to mine of the Blackwing still in the past as well. 
yeah, I don't I feel quite too. so bad now because I've seen how good some of Tom's pictures, well, all of Tom's pictures are, to be fair. So if he's taken anything as bad as my Blackwing Steel picture, I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> um, what else have we got on there? Long tail tit, just found it on the path. Okay, so maybe been predated or something and dropped. Um, what else is there, Steve? So we've got Frankie's going to be attending the Wanstead Flat Walks and then Two Tree Island, as long as the weather's looking okay. And I think it is, which is good. Excellent. Uh, Les Malloy's just joined us. Uh, well, yeah. Almost good finished, night, Les. Yeah, we're about well, to sign out now. Oh. Yeah, we've just, we've sold. I mean, he, he said he wanted one of the signs, but we've sold that now. So that's, that's gone. Sorry, Les. Sorry, Les. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, no, we've got one for you, Les. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Actually, Les, you, if you've got time, because we're going in about a minute, will you be at any of the walks the next couple of days? Because we can bring a sign with us if, if you will be. If you can pop it in the chat, um, that would be good. Um, and I think that's about it. Or oh, Mel Shepherd well said he, he had a, a, a collected a long tail tit nest when he was a kid, cut it out from the brambles, kept it for years. Um, it is nice when you find a nest, obviously, as long as it's, you know, an empty nest, of course. Um, it is nice to sort of have a look and 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 maybe keep it on one side. So uh, they're always lovely things, particularly long tail tits yeah. nests. Oft, yeah. Often in a, the cleft of a of a branch and out of a tree, and they get in there, and you really struggle to see the nest at all. It is so camouflaged, mm. but it's out in the open. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Right, I think we're good. Are we good? So yeah. So tomorrow night, we've yes. got we've got. Uh, We've got other guests on tomorrow night, haven't we? We have. Um, we have got, we'll have uh, Simon Wood. Yeah. And mm. we'll have somebody else. Who else is oh, doing no, it? No. I can't remember. Is it Mel? Well, we have Neil on no. Mel! Was it Mel? No. no I'm just, Mel, I'm just Mel's on Monday. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Hold on. We've got... It's uh, gone horribly wrong. Uh, no. No, it's Simon and Mark tomorrow night. Mark! Excellent. Yes. Apologies, Mark, if you're watching this. We didn't really forget you. <laughs> assuming he gets out of bed of course if he doesn't get out of bed then then we're not going to let him on the show <laughs> excellent well done guys brilliant thank you very much great. yeah thanks for doing the walks today chaps much appreciated yeah and, thank you and again thanks to all those who turned up today and as we say at every show if you don't subscribe to the Essex Bird Watching Society YouTube channel please hit the subscribe button thumbs up down below there as well and if you do any social media, hashtag BCBW23, please. Yep. So then we can yep. find it nice and easy and share it amongst everyone else. Great. Lovely. Uh, we'll have a good day tomorrow anyway. Yep. Thank you. I'm off to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you all later. Yeah. Bye. Right, well, good birding. Bye. 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 See you later.